Knows All Access is brought to you by Visit Tallahassee. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca Cola Zero Sugar, taste the filling. Welcome to Knowles All Access. Thank you for joining us for part one of a special two-part series with Florida State football. I'm Tom Block, and today on the show, head coach Mike Norvell joins me to discuss the latest in Florida State football, both on and off the field. And later in the show, I'll sit down with offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham and senior transfer Devontae Love-Taylor. We'll also get to know strength coach Josh Storms. All that and much more is straight ahead on Knowles All Access. Coach, good to catch up. I know this has been an offseason unlike any that anybody has endured, really, not just uh, in football, but whatever walks of life we're all in. But for you in particular, to come to Florida State, to be in a new position where you're trying to change the culture and get Florida State back to its winning ways, how challenging has this last several months been for you and your staff? Well, it's definitely been unique and, uh, you know, really, really pleased with our staff and, uh, you know, the, the way that we've kind of worked through the, uh, the quarantine and obviously, you know, working through this pandemic. It is, it's something that, uh, you know, no coach has ever seen uh, before, um, you know, as we're sitting there going, uh, you know, you know, you know, through day-to-day -day life trying to, to make sure that we're building relationships, that we're, we're there to help support our guys emotionally and the, their mindset, uh, you know, just the, the physical aspect of it, which has been, you know, limited in a, in a lot of ways, you know, throughout this uh, uh, these last four months, uh, I can I can tell you these last two weeks we've been able to get on the field with them a little bit, and uh, I've been walking around with a smile on my face because you know that's what I miss. Uh, I miss the the day-to-day -day interaction, you know, being able to to be around these guys and just to, to help help lift them up and uh, to challenge them and push them uh, uh, to be the best version of them. And uh, you know this this uh, pandemic has definitely thrown us a, a few curveballs throughout the the journey, but I think our guys have handled that well, and um, you know we're just excited to get back to to our new normal uh, as as, as soon as possible and we'll talk about the new normal but in terms of building relationships when you're in the abnormal which is this zoom world how difficult is that to try and forge a relationship when you're doing it via a computer or a phone well I mean it's unique for sure and uh, you know, we we tried to to develop as many different ways uh, to be able to connect and uh, you build those relationships and the day-to-day -day interaction where uh, you have a wide receiver coach and a defensive back or, or o-line coach and and, uh, and a linebacker I mean that interaction that makes our staff and our program um, you know, unique and and just how we how we focus on and try to build those relationships developing that culture that uh, that you talked about um, you know that's where you miss out and so you, we tried to be unique throughout the uh, throughout the process of still making those connections but uh, you know it, it, there's just a challenge when everybody's uh, you know in quarantine at, at different places but these last two weeks have really uh, provided an opportunity for us to, to continue to grow and uh, you know, I'm excited about having having everyone back and uh, you're definitely looking forward to the to the to the future of what we're going to be able to do and just uh, continuing to to set that standard and build those relationships. How much have the players, uh, have leaders emerged among the players group during this time? Well, you know, that's one of those things that's, that's also challenging. I mean, it's a, uh, you, it, anybody can give a speech. And you know to do that virtually to uh, to be able to to help encourage each other. I mean that's th those that's that's one area. But you know to be able to see the action and the, the buy-in and the day-to-day. -day, th those are things that uh, I think you've seen guys that have taken ownership in communication. You see seen guys that have taken ownership and and helping hold each other accountable to doing what we're trying to do. But uh, you know it's just you have to be together. And I think that's something that is so critical. Um, I'm I'm ex really excited about this group that we have, and I'm excited about uh, you know the guys that that are that are hungry to grow the guys that are hungry to, to, to help be that example uh, for what we're trying to accomplish but uh, you know it's it's one of those things that uh, you know you really have to encourage and push guys along uh, throughout the process when you're when you're virtually you know trying to operate and but I think we've had we've had uh, a really good group of guys that have, have taken that ownership and embraced it and you know now it's time to put it in action here as we're getting closer to camp 
Take us back to how you first got to know Coach Dillingham and, and uh, the extent of that relationship. Yeah, you know, uh, Coach Dillingham is a phenomenal coach. I think he's one of the brightest minds in, in the game. Um, you know, it's, it's a definitely a unique story. Uh, you know, I was the offensive coordinator out at Arizona State. Uh, you know, I was, I was one of the youngest coordinators in the country, and he was the youngest offensive coordinator in high school ranks. And, uh, you know, he said that he, he would love the opportunity to come up and talk ball and, you know, obviously build that relationship. And, and so I, I told him, I said, I mean, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, this is when we meet, and the only thing I ask is that you, you, you be there early and uh, little did I know he was going to show up every single day and you know he was going to pour in and invest in uh, in what he, in his knowledge of the game and you know obviously how we did things and uh, the, you know, when I had a, when I had a chance to be able to to hire hire someone you know he was the first call that I made and you know he's he's got an incredible future and you're know, definitely glad to continue to work side by side with him. What about the history on the other side of the ball with uh, your defensive coordinator and Adam Fuller? Yeah, so Adam was with me this this past year at uh, at Memphis, and when you saw Adam and the, and the body of work of, of his defenses and how they played, uh, you know it was a, it was an all inclusive approach. And when I had that very first conversation with him, I had a wonderful sense of what that relationship could be, his mindset, his approach, uh, the the philosophy of what it takes to be successful. There was it was very in line to the things that I believed, and um, you know being able to work with him this last year and see the improvement that was made uh, you know you know there uh, with our defense and at, at Memphis and then being able to carry that here uh, to to the opportunity that's in front of us at Florida State I could not be any more excited about uh, you know somebody leading our defense more than Adam Fuller and uh, you're really looking forward to, to you know that progression and what we're gonna be able to do coming up don't miss my conversation with offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham Coach, I, I know you have a, an interesting young start to jumping into the coaching profession. You know, we always hear a lot of counsel when you're growing up and we tell our kids, you know, get as much experience as you can, that sort of thing. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be actually coaching as a senior in high school, which you were doing. So how did that happen that you became uh, literally coaching while still in high school? Well, my entire life, people always told me, you know, you're going to be a coach. and. Uh, which is bittersweet because, you know, I was trying to play. <laughs> you know, I'm 12, I, I want to play. And they're like, yeah, you're going to be a coach. I'm like, okay, I guess that's good. And that didn't really actually, you know, come full circle till going into my senior high school, I tore my ACL, ended up tearing the rest of my knee. And then my coach, uh, Charlie Regal at the time, uh, told me, hey, you should probably just start coaching if that's what you want to do. And from there on, I've been coaching ever since. And then you cross paths with Coach Norvell but more or less invited you, as I understand it, to come in and watch some film with him. And I don't know if he really expected that you were going to show up every day, but but uh, you you wouldn't go away, as I understand it. <laughs> I mean, that that's something that's unique about Coach and just the culture he creates is he's inviting. I think I just took that opportunity. I said, man, if he's really going to let me sit in these meetings, I'm going to get a, a master's and a doctorate in football by the age of 19 to 20 if I get to sit in every one of these meetings he's going to have. So I took that as an opportunity to learn. So it was a blessing. You were at Memphis two years ago, at Auburn last year, Florida State now. What, walk us through the process. How do you install the offense? And I realize that's not just a on the field thing. You've been working through that the last several months. But I mean, is there cliff notes on how you get that accomplished? Well, I think that the key is the detail. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing that people lose when installing an offense is it's not necessarily the plays. Everybody runs the same plays. The identity of who you are is going to be what coach does all the time, climb. So when installing an offense, climb, commitment, little things, intensity, middle toughness, brotherhood, that's what we're trying to install. We're trying to install that in every play. That's what we're instilling every day. It's the culture, the culture, the culture, the culture, the culture. And that is what makes or breaks programs is people who actually believe in the culture. The plays and the system, that's going to take care of itself. We're worried about the climb. Are you always this high energy? I think, I don't know, it's just who I am, so is, I guess is it, yes. <laughs> is this non-caffeinated or is this caffeinated? Uh, I'm about one sip into a coffee, but other than that, I mean, this is, I would say, 95% regular. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big fan of, of Shark Tank, America's Got Talent, those type of shows. Why, what's the intrigue? I love seeing people strive for something and work for something and then see them succeed. It's a big reason I coach, and I tell, I tell my players this, I like to see people happy. 
I like to see people accomplish their goals. And when you watch those shows, I envision our players going in the weight room, going out to practice, all of these tough times, and then that moment that they make a great play or they get it in the classroom. I envision that player on Shark Tank getting Mark Cuban to say, hey, I'm gonna invest in you. I, I see that. So I just love that feeling of other people's success. And that's what I get from those shows, same parallel to why I coach. All right, let's go back to FSU and, and, and football. Bigger picture here. I mean, you, you were at Auburn last year. You've been climbing, as we've talked about, from uh, meeting Coach Norvell at Arizona State and then at Memphis. What has the experience been like here at Florida State, given the tradition that, that FSU has? Well, I mean, day one on the job, Derek Brooke texts you. That's pretty cool. Not many places can you say that. Deion Sanders texts me. Chris Winkie, right? You have all these great, Charlie Ward, you have all these guys, I could go on and on and on, but they're all involved. All these different people, you see them on the wall, you walk into this massive building and it's just different. And I would say that is the, the thing that's so special here is you can feel it. You get that feeling like, whoo, there's a lot of history here. And you kind of just take it in. What excites you the most as you get set to get back out on the field and get ready here for 20 Just being around the guys. Being around the guys and practicing around them. That's it. I mean, that's why I coach. It's, I love it. I, I want to see our guy make a mistake. I want to go in the film room. I want to correct it. And I want to go out on the field the next day and I want him to do it right. And I want to see the look on his face when it clicks. I feel like you don't need this counsel, but enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Coming up, we'll get to know strength coach Josh Storm. One coach that typically has a lot of interaction with, with your student athletes is your strength coach and you have familiarity with Coach Storm. Talk a little bit about what he brings to the program and, and why you wanted him here at Florida State. I um, mean, he's absolutely incredible. And I, I've, been with, uh, I've been with Josh working side by side with him for the last eight years. And uh, to see you know, his growth, the, the type of coach that he is, the type of man that he is, the leader, I mean, it's, uh, we have an all-star in, in Josh Storms. And uh, to see the, the way that him and his staff have had to adapt. And uh, you know, we were able to provide every player with, uh, you know, with individual workouts to the quarantine and uh, you know how specific they got with guys that had access to a, to a facility or weights to guys that you know, had no access and uh, just the versatility in the job that he did and the example that uh, of what uh, you know, our staff was able to provide for our players I thought they did, did an exceptional job you know now getting them back and being able to assess exactly where we are but the, the next steps that are necessary for us to get to where we want to go uh, this is not a normal offseason you know you, you saw the unbelievable strides that we made from from January to, to March, I mean, it was incredible. And then, you know, this is, you know, kind of uh, you know, derailed you know, some of that path and, and anticipated uh, your, your journey of what we, what we thought it would be. But, you know, I think that he's done an exceptional job of, of adjusting that plan. And, and you, know, you know, here these last few weeks, it's been, uh, I know, really positive for him to be able to get his hands on those guys in a day-to-day -day fashion. And, uh, you know, I know he's gonna have our guys ready to roll once we get, uh, once we get here to the fall. For these guys, the main thing is what? To become the best football player they can possibly be. Develop the athletic traits and qualities it takes to maximize their God-given skill set, okay? So when we program for our guys, what we're looking at for all the time is carryover, you know? Is what we're doing in here in this weight room gonna matter when that guy puts that helmet on and crosses that white line to go make plays? So if I can find ways to help them hone their craft through the physical development, you know, and we're gonna do that uh, initially in a lot of basic ways. We're never gonna get very far away from a platform or a barbell. Um, you know, we're gonna be based around the back squat, the Olympic movements. We're gonna stay based a little more around a shorter duration, higher intensity, you know, acceleration, deceleration, change of direction, trying to temper the body for the demands of the way the game is played. Ultimately, all that stuff, what makes it all go is building the right relationships with the guys. For me, it's having the four very best coaches that are the best fit for our guys in this program here, and those guys being able to implement that program every day and be able to, to convey that to guys in their own way, but we're all kind of singing the same song. 
when we work with our guys and we start you know, projecting goals for individuals for the future, a lot of that comes initially from observation, seeing how they play the game. And then also for us with communication with, with their position coach and their coordinator and with Coach Norvell, of where do they envision that guy going? And then ultimately it comes back to, to the individual, it comes back to the player. What's their goal for themselves? Because if our goal for them is different than their goal for themselves, we're gonna have a hard time making those two things meet to make progress. So love most about the job is the relationship with the guys. You know, it's seeing guys you know, when, when they come in when they're you know, 16, 17 years old and the recruiting process first starts to the day they show up as day one freshmen, all the way through that, that growth and maturation that happens in four years when those guys are graduating and moving on and seeing where those guys go in their lives and the relationships that are built along the way. That's probably the most fulfilling part of what we get to do. It's not the more weight on the bar or running faster. It's, it's the, the emotional growth that happens to guys during their career they spend with us. Next up, senior transfer Devontae Love-Taylor joins us for a special interview. Devontae, your senior season here, you're a Floridian, you've been at the southern end of the state, you grew up in the Tampa area, now you're here in North Florida in Tallahassee at FSU. So uh, it was big news when you announced your transfer to Florida State. Just walk us through the decision, really twofold. One, to leave where you were, and two, why Florida State? So um, I decided to leave FIU because uh, my offensive line coach, who I was really close with, he took a job somewhere else. And uh, my strength coach, who I was really close with, he also left FIU. And I wanted to see what else was out there. I wanted to see if I had an opportunity to play somewhere bigger. Um, get a little more competition before I try to play at the next level. And why ultimately FSU? Um, I grew up in Florida and growing up in Florida, everybody wants to play at Florida State, watching them win the national championship, just going, no matter where you go in the state of Florida, all you see is Florida State, Florida State, and it's a dream come true to be here. How does your experience, because you've been a two-year starter, maybe longer than that at FIU, how do you think that can help the situation here? Um, I think especially with the younger guys at, at the tackle position, because guard and center, we have great leaders in Bavion and Brady and Baselli, and I think I can come in and help the younger guys at tackle like Darius and Jalen and just teach them what I've seen on game film, picking up blitzes, taking shorter steps, just really the details. O offensive line is all about details. And how difficult has it been to, to integrate yourself uh, into the program, but to get to know your teammates, to get to know your coaches when you're in a situation that we've been meeting via Zoom and we're quarantined and it's just not life as we normally go about it. I mean, Coach Norvell made sure that we all, that we've been like, like we'd still be in the meeting, like we've been introduced to all the coaches' families via Zoom. We've had one-on-ones with Coach Norvell and our um, and our position coaches. So it's, it's not as hard as you would think it was. And we've been around each other for, I've been here since January and I've met everyone uh, every every coach's kids, all the wives, and 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 now though you're able to meet face to face a little bit more frequently in terms of uh, the rules on how often you can get together. That has to be a little bit better though to have yes, more sir, connectivity. It it's good and it, it builds chemistry. It's hard to build chemistry with the guys you're going to be playing next to via Zoom, but when you get together, that's when you start to really gel together. You know, we talk so much about when somebody transfers, we talk about the on-field, but you're continuing your education, so what are you pursuing outside of football? Um, in December, I should be done with my master's in criminology. Okay, and what's your ultimate hopes? Uh, your ultimate hope may be um, I got my NFL. bachelor's in uh, communications, uh, so I want to do sports broadcasting. And then criminology is just something that, like, that the law enforcement side's always interested me, um, but the main goal is obviously the NFL, but if not that, then sports broadcasting or coaching. And then bringing it back to this season in FSU, what do you have as both personal and team goals? Uh, personal goals just do what I got to do to help the team, do my 111th on every play, dominate the guy in front of me, and then team goals, obviously the goals to win every game. I feel like um, we can win every game if we just line up and do what we're taught by Coach Novo. How difficult has it been, or is it right now, to keep mentally focused on what's going on when there's so much uncertainty hanging in the air. It's it's not really hard. You just got to lock in. We I remember when this whole thing started, Coach uh, Atkins, he told us, he said, this is going to be like an NFL offseason. He said, you're off on your own. He said, it's you're holding yourself accountable and you're gonna we're going to see when we get back who was holding each other accountable. That's a really good parallel that I hadn't thought of in terms of basically they're saying, 
you, you, you're an adult. You got to figure this out on your own. Yes, sir. It's good catching up and, and, and best of luck to you this season. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. That's a wrap for part one of our special two-part series with Florida State football. On the next episode, we'll get to know the other phases of the game with defensive coordinator Adam Fuller and special teams coordinator John Papuchis with some additional thoughts from Mike Norvell. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned for part two right here on Knowles All Access. Knowles All Access is brought to you by Visit Tallahassee. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling.